This is Business AM. This is Metropole Television. Thank you very much for investing your time with us this morning. We are talking about how the economy is getting ready to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, we want to really show you this morning on where we are as of today. What we do know is that we have seven confirmed cases in the country. So let's just begin with that story. We're joined by CPA in Okumakori this morning, Monari, this morning as we talk about that. Now, Kenya has confirmed three more COVID-19 cases yesterday, bringing the total number to seven. According to Health Cabinet Secretary Mutahi Kagwe, two of the victims are a couple that had traveled from Dubai on the 5th March, while the other is a Burundian who had traveled into the country on 17th March. Kagwe father says that the government has consulted Chinese doctors through video conferencing on knowledge sharing since cases have been dwindling. They emphasized on self-safety measures and asserted that the government will forcibly quarantine those who are not complying with quarantine order. Let's take a look at that story. Thank you, Victoria Munga, for that report. You know, that's not the conversation that we're going to have this morning, though, because now you do know those are seven cases. The only point there, you know, that we were looking at, it, a patient was able to just walk out and go home. 
and they had to go after the patient, bring them back, and they, the patient <coughs> tested positive. I, th I think the first thing I'll, I'll want to say is that uh, I'll to congratulate uh, the, the new CS. Yes. Because um, uh, when you look online and the kind of reactions Kenyans are giving, yes. there's a bit of confidence that he instills in people on the way he's handling the matter. Because uh, it's a situation whereby you need someone who is very confident, who is coming out strongly on the issues that uh, he wants to address. Yes. And he's giving Kenyans the kind of confidence that we'll be wanting during this time. But then again, we also have to call out the government to try and speak the truth. Yes. Especially when it comes to the number of pe people infected and, and the actions that the government is taking. Because uh, we again feel as Kenyans like we don't have all the information. And when you look at what the World Health Organization shared yesterday, is that uh, they feel that Africa is reporting very low numbers. Not because those are the low numbers that we have, yes. because we are not robust in, 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 in testing. Yes. And, and that's a very big issue that uh, needs to be addressed at this time on how many real cases do we really have. Because if we don't co come out and talk about the real numbers, the spread will continue. And within no time, I mean the U.S. moved from 15 cases in January to around uh, three or 4,000 cases now. Yes. We have to try and, uh, and avoid that. And the government has to put in measures to ensure that they track every single person they feel has come into contact with the seven yes. that have already been tested. And uh, those people are tested or self-isolated. Yes. Yes. Pretty much, isn't it? I just want us to leave it there because then now, yesterday, we did see the banking sector, which we do know is at the center stage of the survival of the economy, therefore, and also the way in which the economy is getting geared to fight this, come up with a raft of measures. Now, the banking sector has come up with a raft of measures to cushion the economy from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. In a brief to the president, yesterday morning at the state house in Abubi, central <coughs> bank kenya governor dr patrick njoboge outlined the measures that the banking sector has implemented to cushion the economy from the covid 19 pandemic in his brief to the president dr njoboge has indicated that all the money from the banks will be quarantined for one week before it is released to the market to cut chances of spreading the virus through cash handling now with fears of businesses cutting back on production as the government and takes unprecedented measures to curb the spread. The banking sector is an agreement to extend personal loans repayment current as of March 2020 for a period of one year with costs of balance inquiry through mobile phones also waived. Now with analysts painting a grim reality for the MSME <coughs> sector that has been projected to real from the effects of the pandemic, the Central Bank of Kenya governor has also extended the same only branch to the businesses that foresee difficulties in payment of their loans to get in touch with their banks for an extension of repayment period for at least one year or get into a monitorium that will settle that as well. Let's take a look at that story.
It's Nancy, our reporter, just painting the picture of exactly what now the economy is gearing to. First question, because that's exactly what we're talking about. Enough? Uh, <laughs> you, you, know, you know, the, 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 the central bank governor comes out as a very good uh, professional when it comes to giving advice yes. to the Kenyans. Yes. Because uh, all that they have done, and when you read through the press release that they issued yesterday, is just advising us on how we're supposed to relate with the banks. Yes. Banks which offer services to us. Yes. So, and what Kenyans expect from him is directions on how banks should handle the Kenyans or which measures that they're taking, uh, the government is taking, yes. to ensure that one, businesses stay afloat, <coughs> two, businesses are able to pay their salaries of their employees and all the other expenses that they incur during this period yes. until such a time when we feel that the economy is safe and, I mean, moving forward again. Mm -hmm. So, what, I mean, when uh, Jeroga comes out and he's advising us to go to the banks, to go to our banks so that we can renegotiate our loans, yes. he's not telling us at what point we need to go to the banks. Do we need to go to the banks now? when we are trying to self-distance and, and, and self-isolate, uh, or we wait until the pandemic is declared over, then we can go and negotiate with the banks. Yes. He's not giving us directions, because what we could have expected, and I was going through the statement that was issued by the Bank of Mauritius, is clear directions on whether the banks are giving moratoriums when it comes to loan repayments, yes. how is handling the cash reserve ratio, because banks need more money at this time to be able to give out, mm -hmm. and what measures the government is putting in place to inject more cash to the businesses that will serve up during this period yes. so that they don't go under. Because with the kind of measures that uh, Njoroga has given us, it's basically like the way we were yesterday. We are the same now. Yes. He has not told us anything that can really be of, of help to this nation and, uh, and to the businesses, other than the only issue that has been implemented of uh, uh, free, uh, b b uh, chargeless, yes. uh, mobile uh, transfers yes. and bank payments. Yes. There's really nothing that they've done. And he has to realize how serious this matter is. Yes. And uh, the kind of effect that it's having on businesses. I mean, if you walk around the CBD business, have closed. Some employees are not even sure whether they will receive their salaries. Yes. And if we want people to self-isolate, if we want people to work at home, if we want people to stay at home until such a time when we feel it's safe to come back to the streets, the government has to take action. Yes. And issue instructions on what exactly needs to be done to ensure that the businesses survive. Pretty much, isn't it? Yes. Now, for anybody really looking at this directive from uh, Dr. Patrick Njoroge, yeah. that money from the banks has to be quarantined for one week, what effect is this bound to have on the economy? No, you, no, you see, it is, it, he also is not really understanding how this uh, virus works. Yes. Because these monies that he's saying are to be quarantined, mm -hmm. it's monies that have been handled by people. And there's a lot of money that circulates out here yes. without necessarily ending up in the banks. I mean, if, if you moved a note and you marked it, it probably moves to 20, 30 or 40 people before it ends up in a bank so that yes. it can be quarantined. So those are the measures that we need. We need to push the, the, the country to cashless form of payments during this period so that people can have less uh, chances of handling money because we know that is actually one way of they can be able to transmit uh, uh, this virus. Yes. So telling us that you're going to quarantine money before you release it to the market, so what happens when the money is circulating in the market? Because money can move from here to Lodwa, to Eldoret all the way to Mombasa yes. before it can get to a bank. Yes. And we will be having catastrophic effects yes. during that period. Pretty much, therefore. Let's have a go to the major point of the announcement yesterday. Yes. Now, Dr. Patrick Jiroge did recognize, therefore, that majority of the loans that are held in these banks are just personal loans. And therefore, he said, well, if you're going to check your, your balance, mm -hmm. and if you're also going to transfer money from your account into your mobile wallet, it's going to be cashless. But some banks are yet to effect that right now. We've seen banks like Equity and all that announcing that the boards have to approve that. Did it come out as an advice to the banks or just a rule that was set yesterday? But it doesn't look like a law, therefore. I, th I thought uh, is from the meeting that uh, the central bank had with the, with the, with the uh, managers of the yes. banking sector and uh, the mobile phone uh, payment platforms, that's m -Pesa and Airtel, they had, a, they had an agreement yes. on what was supposed to be done. Because these banks that are coming out and telling us about board approvals are making us think like the banks that have already initiated do not have boards. All banks have boards. And when it gets to, push gets to shove, like a situation we have right now, yes. we don't have that time to wait. Mm -hmm. Action must be taken immediately. And we have to call out the banks 
that have not implemented this, that they have to look for a way of standing with the Kenyans. Yes. Because this is uh, it's something that the government and the banking sector feels can be able to help promote cashless form of payments. They have to effect it immediately. But you see, if a direction does not come from a directive does not come from central bank with penalties there too, then some people can actually decide to ignore that. And that is the that is the danger that we have yes. with the kind of statement that is coming from the central bank. Yes. Where is advising instead of directing? As opposed to a directive, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. It, 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 it looks like danger. an advice as opposed to a directive. Ex exactly. Good. Let's just therefore look at exactly, I know, the biggest announcement that the president actually made yesterday was about sort of thinking of a way in which to cushion the businesses within the economy. He didn't announce anything. He said we communicated in due course. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at exactly what other economies that have been affected heavily have done. We do know that when we look at South Korea and China, in terms of imports that come into the country, you could be accounting for more than 20% of imports that come from these economies into the country. Yes. So that means, therefore, as we speak about it right now, we're wiping about 20% of our business's ability to continue since we effected the ban. And yes. that is still not known when it's going to stop. Yes. USA has come up with 100, was it 100 trillion? Was it 1 trillion? I just can't get my figures on that number. For the US. Yeah, for the US. Yes, 1 the trillion. Yeah, 1 trillion. The, yes. the first thing that they did, number one, yes. was to cut the Fed interest rate to 0.25%. Yes. They've also given them a 1 trillion economic package yes. that's going to spar and prop up the economy during this time. Yes. Were we expecting anything more from the president and the Central Bank of Kenya Governor, Dr. Patrick Njoge, yesterday at that briefing? Okay, we have to be cognizant of the fact that uh, we are a struggling economy. Yes. And we've not been doing well anyway for the f past uh, few years. Yes. And 2020 looked like our year and we thought that things were going to, to turn around. Yes. And I, mo I know from where the president is seated, they are really wondering what they can do. Yes. In, in, in such a situation because uh, we, we, we are struggling to repay loans. We are struggling to collect enough to be able to sustain this economy. But I think in a situation like we are, which is an emergency, yes. decisions have to be made. And uh, these decisions have to revolve around ensuring that businesses stay afloat. But the president has not come out clearly to address that. Neither has the central bank manager, uh, governor addressed that. Yes. And we hope they can be able to address that quickly in the coming uh, days because as, as entrepreneurs, as young businesses, we are waiting for the directions from the government so that people can be able to make decisions, whether to close businesses and stay at home, knowing that the government has covered us. But away from, if, if, if you don't have that comfort of being covered by the government, then you have no choice than to risk and yes. go to work. Yes. And if, if you've seen, and I know the government is thinking critically about this, the directives about self-distancing and working as from home has not worked. It has not worked. Because the, streets, do of it, the yes. streets are almost full, yes. like, especially in the afternoon, yes. and uh, the risks continue increasing. So the government has to come out with very clear directions on how they can support SMEs if they are, give, if they are going to inject cash, not really directly, but create more of a fund where people can be able to borrow at low interest rates once this pandemic is over yes. to be able to kickstart their businesses. That is the kind of confidence that the business community wants. Yes. To know that we can be able to pay our salaries, we can be able to pay our fixed expenses and still be able to access cash. Yes. Either in April or May, that can be able to help us kickstart our businesses. If that does not happen, yes. people will still come to town, people will still go to work, hoping that they can be able to generate enough to meet the expenses, yes. and the risks continue increasing every day. Pretty much, yes. isn't it? And I want you to point you out to exactly what we expect to happen as from this Friday. Now, you do know that any learning facility within the economy is supposed to close tomorrow. Yes. That means, therefore, these universities, these learning institutions and schools, they do businesses with traders on a daily basis. Once that directive was made, wasn't it therefore and I, I don't want to call it common sense, therefore. Wasn't it common sense, therefore, that in that announcement that we could be talking about packages to the traders and business people within the economy whose businesses are directly affected by the closure of these schools? Because everybody expected that. I mean, the economy is, 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 is on a slowdown completely. Yes. Away yes. from even the universities, organizations like NTSA closed. Yes. The ESEC closed. They're not allowing people to come into the organizations and so many other organizations. And 
people interact with these organizations every day. Like yes. you said, the universities, there are so many people who do supplies to the universities. There are employees and yes. there are companies that actually rely on these organizations to be able to survive and pay their salaries and the rest. So the moment you're telling them to stay at home, you should be giving them an alternative. And that is what the government has not done. An alternative in terms of, we know that when you will be away, you will not be doing business. Yes. You will still need to pay rent for your office. Yes. You will still need to pay salaries and all those other expenses. We are giving you this kind of package. So that once all this is done, you can still be able to have cash flow yes. to run the business. Yes. So we let's probably let's not condemn the government so much. We hope it's something that is in the mix. And I understand the cabinet is meeting this morning. Probably that's one of the discussions that will be in the, in the cabinet away from the lockdown yes. so that Kenyans can have comfort and can comfortably stay away from the streets yes. during this period. I want to point you out to another area, therefore, before we go for a short break yes. and come back and look at exactly what some sectors of the economy are demanding of the government. Yes. The saying, look, the one area in which we really wanted you guys to talk about is tax payments now, at this time. Yeah. Was that supposed to come out yesterday, or we just wait to see exactly where this goes before we address that area? I, I, I highly suspect that <laughs> the government might not go to that direction because there's been a lot of push yes. to, to, to collect more and more. Yes. And even without giving tax holidays, uh, tax uh, payments will be affected automatically because yes. uh, if, 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 if organizations are not in business, you don't expect them to withhold tax and pay to the government. You don't expect to them to do sales. So VAT uh, payments will go down and all those things. So I, I, I think once we have this stimulus package, then we can address the issues of taxes. Yes. And a tax issue is probably something that we may want to address once we've fully understood the extent of damage on the economy yes. of this virus. Yes. Then at that point, the government can make a decision on which direction it wants to take when it comes to tax holidays. Yes. I think what is important now is that as the economy goes to the ICU, for example, we need to have measures to bring it out. Yes. And those are stimulus packages that can be able to sustain uh, small businesses during this period. Then we can be able to address so many other issues after we are done with the, the self-quarantine and, 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 and self-isolation. Businesses are kick, have, have, have started operating. We can now be able to assess the damage and see how we can be able to support the businesses yes. again. And that is what is important for us now. Yes. Isn't yes. it? Yes. All right. Now, Enoch, I just want us to go for a very short break. But when we come back there, for, we're going to see exactly what the Bank of Mauritius has done now for in terms of cautioning the economy from this effect. And ask ourselves the questions, is that the same direction we should be taking as our economy after the break?